What's up guys? Welcome back to the Comfort Zone, your place for some casual, comfortable commander. I'm your host, Dan. That's your host, John. John, what are we doing today? Today, we are celebrating the release of the Lost Caverns of Ixalan with our pre-constructed battle. I am going to be playing the vamp... No, wrong. I am going to be piloting Ahoy Matey, mm. which is the pirate reanimator deck. Uh, I'm pretty excited. I was uh, really torn about the vampire deck, because you guys know I love my vampires, but the pirate deck being a reanimator theme, and it's called Ahoy Mateys. We are ready to bring back some boys and bring back some booty. Sweet. Now, we over here are not breaking the mold. We're staying true to our heart, and we are playing Velasa Ramp Tour, uh, which I think is a hilarious punny name, so good on you, wizards. <laughs> uh, but hey, pretty simple, man. You know we love our dinosaurs on this side of the uh, old camera. Uh, so we're going to try to take some of these bad boys and chomp some, some pirates. Should be pretty interesting. But without further ado, let's journey into the Lost Caverns of Ixalan. Are you ready, dog? Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready, bro. Fresh out Big of the dice. box. 13. Oh, 18, baby. Ah. Sweet. I love doing this. The fresh out of the box stuff. You guys got to try this out there if, you, if you're not on the pre-con uh, ride yet. Um, it's a lot of fun to just kind of crack these <laughs> things like without any knowledge and just go right out the box. We're coming out with a Fury calm snarl uh yeah. a, a very apt name uh it's one of the reveal lands i don't got nothing to oh, reveal yeah. so it's coming out tap and it's your turn all righty i'm gonna draw and we're gonna take it nice and simple we're gonna go with an island and that island is gonna find me a bauble the wayfarer's bauble the Ooh. tap two mana tap it sack it and then i get to go get a basic land Yo. put it in tapped you're up Keep that art on the screen down yonder. That's oh, yeah. pretty is, sick. Gonna, pretty I'll throw nice that enough. one up. Please do. I'm a big fan of that. That's awesome. All right. On top of Kudro, we're coming out with a forest, and then we are coming out with a rampant growth. Oh. Uh, we're going to go find a basic and put it onto the battlefield. Tapped. And it is your turn. All right. We're going to untap. We are going to draw. And while you're doing that, I'm going to come in with a Sulfur Falls. It's coming in untapped because I control an island. And Ooh. then we're going to pass. Oh, that's crazy. All right, untap. I'll keep it. Draw. And we're going to come out with a clifftop retreat. Also going to be tapped because I don't have any planes or mountains. Um, and then, unfortunately, we're going to pass. End of your turn. I'm going to go crack the bobble. No. All right, and you know this is a Grixis deck, so we got the red, the blue... The black land swamp oh. is coming into play tapped. Very nice, very nice. Then we're gonna go to that step that we all like. And we're gonna get to get more mana. Um we're coming with a command tower. Oh um, and uh and then I think what we're gonna have to do here, I think we're gonna have to do is play uh this card. So we're gonna tap uh, one and two and a three and a four, because that's how much that is. And we're gonna play the Azor Fleet Admiral. I don't know what this card does. Neither do so I. So it's a 3-3. Three, three. When it enters the battlefield, I become the monarch. And oh. then the Azor Fleet Admiral cannot be blocked by creatures the monarch controls. Oh, interesting. I Very think cool. that is really neat. So oh, that's for sweet. anybody. Right? Yeah. Sorry. So for anybody who doesn't know the monarch, that's the beginning of my end step draw card, and then whenever a creature deals combat damage to me. Its controller becomes a monarch. So we're going to put that over here so nobody forgets. And then we're going to go to the end step. And as I just mentioned, we're going to draw that card. That's your turn. Oh, wow, dude. That's crazy. I love the fact that it's like guarantees you can always snag the monarchy back. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. I think that's really cool. All right, we're coming out with a Rogue's Passage. Um, nice. And then I guess we're coming down with the boy. Uh, so we're going to tap five. And we're coming out with... Uh, Pants, I mean, uh, Pant Laza, uh, the sun favored. Uh, every time I look at this guy's name, I just think about pants. I don't know why. I'm trying my best, people. Um, so he's a 4-4. Four, four. Uh, whenever he or another dinosaur enters the battlefield under my control, I can discover X, where X is that creature's toughness. I do this only once each turn. But because he's ETB in here, we're going to go ahead and discover X, which is going to be 4. So we're exiling face up. 
Exile cards, yep, uh, until we hit something with less than. Oh, no, no, no. Exile card with that mana value or less. Okay, so it's not like Cascade in that sense. It doesn't have to be less. It can be that value or lower. So, yeah. Uh, so, okay, so we're going to hit it right away. We're going to hit the Majestic Helio Turus. Helio oh, Helioptorus, uh, which is a 2 2 flying uh, dinosaur that says whenever it attacks another target dinosaur, I control gains flying until end of turn. So, we're going to cast that guy for free, which is pretty sweet. Wow. And that's going to be it. Pass it up. Alrighty, so we're gonna untap here. And uh, we're gonna draw, and maybe, ah, oh, and we're gonna miss the land drop, so Miss Pirate Lady's gonna live over in the command zone for another turn at least. Oh no. Um, okay, here we go. We're doing it. We are going to tap um, the command tower and the, uh, what is it, an island? This island, and we're gonna play another very strange pirate. We're playing the Warkite Marauder. So the Warkite Marauder is a 2-1 flying human pirate. Whenever she attacks, target creature defending player controls, loses all abilities, and has base power up to 0-1 until the end of the turn. Oh, thank God. I'm like, if it was till your next turn or something, I'd be like, oh no. <laughs> that would have been very bad. Yeah. Um, and uh, and then, then we're going to unfortunately have to uh, pass a turn, but we're still the Monarch, so we'll draw on that card. This is true. You're right. Alrighty, on tappy up keepy drawly. Uh, what's the what's the PT on your flyable boys? It is two one. Uh two one. Okay, word. All right, so we are going to come out with a canopy vista with the new art, which is pretty fire. Ooh. Not gonna lie. Um, and then we're gonna come down with a with a dinosaurio. You know how that it is. Sense. This is a little point. Uh, so we're going to come out with a one, two, three, uh, four mana for the old Temple Altasaur. Uh, so this guy is a three, four. If a source would deal damage to another dinosaur I control, I prevent all but one of that damage. Oh, no. Uh, pretty sweet. So that's a good card. That's a dinosaur entering the battlefield for the first time. So Pants is going to let me discover, discover X, where X is toughness. That's going to be four. Let's go. The Apex Altasaur is way more than that. Uh, but the Progenitor's Icon is Ooh. not. Um, so that's coming out. And the rest go to the bottom. So Progenitor's Icon is actually a new card. Peep it on screen. It's a three mana mana rock that says enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. We're going with dinosaur, obviously. Uh, I can tap to add one mana of any color or I can tap it. And the next spell of the chosen type I cast this turn can be cast as though it had flash. Uh, if you guys saw our uh, full set review, uh, John talked about this one as one of his picks here, uh, which is a pretty cool card. We love flash enablers, y'all. It's um, the bomb. Do me a quick old clarificationes oh, on yes. your commander. Yes, sir. Does that work the way I think it does? Um, in the sense of allowing me to discover on your turn? Yeah. Yeah, of course. It's do this only once each turn. Ha! So, That's yeah, so, so good. If I get the opportunity to have enough like mana flow that I have the ability to play Dino on my turn, Dino on your turn, yes. Uh, although, with the mana cost, it might be a small bit ambitious for now. But we Velasa ramping, so we'll see. Uh, then we're going to move into combat. And we're coming in with the Majestic Helioptorus and uh, our commander, who we're going to give the power of flight, uh, given the, the Majestic's ability. And what are their power and toughnesses? Uh, so it's a 2-2 two -two and a 4-4. Four -four. Mm. All right, well, six damage coming my way. Oh, yeah. So we did it. We got the damage. Uh, and then we are going to go ahead and end our turn, but we're going to get to to draw because we're the Monarch. You're the Monarch. Yes, you yeah. are. So and gonna... at the end of your turn, I'm going to tap this for black and this for red, and I'm going to cast Rakdos Charm. Choose uh -oh. one. I'm going to destroy target artifact. What's that? Which one? The, the, how many do you have? One. <laughs> That's what That's I thought. rude. Yeah, Wait, it this is. This is our first new card, you dingus. No, it's not. Your commander's the first new card. All right, that's fair. That's fair. I give it to you. All right, fine. It's dead. It's gone. You My got turn? It. Yes, yes. All right, let's go to the untap. 
and let's draw um alrighty we're gonna come down with another swamp um and then you guys probably know what that means but let me see if i know what that means what does it mean yes it does admiral brass the unsinkable we're tapping five and here she is bop ba da ba look at that card so she is a three three human pirate when Admiral Brass Unsinkable enters the battlefield, mill four cards. We're going one. That's a human pirate guy. We're going two. That's another pirate guy. We're going three. That's a land bomber. And four. That's a human pirate. So then her second ability. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you may return target pirate creature card from your mm. graveyard to the battlefield with a finality counter on it. It has base power, toughness 4-4, four, four, gains haste till end of turn. For anybody who doesn't know, finality counter is a new way to say when the creature dies, if it had a finality counter on it, exile it. Rip Truth. it in half. Throw the card in the trash. Do not um, do that, please. No, please don't. So now, uh, I'm going to need a minute to look at the three cards I just threw into my graveyard. Sweet. Alrighty, so now that we've taken a peep at some of these creeps in our graveyard, we are going to go to the combat step. And I'm going to reanimate the Merchant Raiders. So the Merchant Raiders, it's a 2-4, but it's coming in as a 4-4. Four, four. Um, uh, when it or another pirate enters the battlefield under my control, tap up to one target creature. That creature does not untap during its controller's untap step for as long as I control the Merchant Raiders. So, what we're going to do is we, when he enters, are going to tap down... Um, we're going to keep your commander tapped. Rude. Um, and then we're going to go to combat. Uh, I'm coming in with the Azor Fleet Admiral, 3-3, three, three, the Warkite, 2-1, and my new 4-4. Four, four, but on declaration of attack for the Warkite, I am going to turn your only untapped creature until a zero, into a 0-1 until end of turn. Wow. That seems rude. Um... Okay, okay, okay. Well, let's go ahead and uh, make a move that is with our future in mind. Uh, and we are going to tap one, uh, and we're going to path to exile. Uh, and I think we're going to hit the monarchy guy. Yeah. Um, does he make your board unblockable or just himself? He... Just him. He cannot be okay. blocked by creatures and monsters. All right, all right. Um, let's 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 still get him. Okay. Let's get the monarch, dude. So he's getting exiled, and I'm gonna get that basic land into play tapped. So I got a zero one. Who is? I don't want him to die. So we're just gonna take it. What's the damage in total? Damage in total is gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six. Six all damage. All right, we're taking our damage. We've been duped. And then I do become the monarch because I smacked you. That's true. There's my mountain. Hey! hey, hey. Nice. I had to grab one. Uh, and then let me uh, slap this monarch token back in there so I don't forget to draw cards. And then uh, that is the end of the turn, though. So we're going to go ahead and draw that card. And it's your turn. Sweet. What's the, the PT on the reanimated dude? Power he's tough. a 4-4. Oh, he's a 4-4. Four, four. Jank yep. Rooney. I oh, realize yeah. that, bro. All right, I'm up keep draw. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, well, we're going to start with this. Um, we're going to tap one. We are going to play the Savage Stomp, which is a sorcery. Spell costs two less to cast if it targets a dinosaur I control. I put a plus one to counter on target creature I control. Then that creature fights target creature I don't control. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and target Pants. Uh, get him an old plus one to counter. And then we're going to fight the reanimated Gar. finality guy. Oh, bang! And he gets exiled. Poof! Which means yes, your sir. commander will untap on your next turn. I enjoy that very much. Um, yeah. So that's it for the Savage Stomp. And then the other, the Flying Boy is a 2-1, right? Uh, yes, sir. All right. So one, two, three, four, five. We are going to tap five. And we're going to come out with the Raging Sword Tooth, uh, mm. which is a 5-5 five, five dinosaur trample. When he enters the battlefield, it deals one damage to each other creature. Um, so we're going to hit 
the kite sail dude, which will kill him. Um, now, my pant lizard dude, you might be thinking, oh, he won't die now. But actually, because of Temple Altasaur, he only received one damage from the yeah. fight. So he has another damage on him from this. Uh, so none of my guys are going to die. Unfortunately, we don't have any enraged, so no triggers with respect to that. But we do get our discovery trigger for five this time. And we got rid of one of your value dudes, so that's pretty cool. Uh, and we're going to hit a cultivate off of that. Uh, so that's pretty sweet. Uh, so we'll search for that. Okay, we're going to grab a forest and a plains. We're going to send the plains out onto the B field. Forest into my hand. Cultivate into the G yard. That's that. Now we're going to combat. We're looking. And uh, she don't fly, I don't think. So we're coming in. Nope. Here comes our Helioptyrx and the Temple Altasaur. A total of five damage. Oh, five. Obviously, we're enabling flight upon the Altasaur via his attack trigger. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're going to take the Monarchy back. Cha -chong. There you go. Then we're going to end our turn and we are going to draw a card. Pretty sweet. All right, I'm Pass it up. Tap. And uh, she's unsinkable, but I guess can't say that much about her uh, her crew right now. So let's see if we can do something like that. <laughs> uh, we're going to come up with an island. We like lands. And then we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mana. So I think we're going to have to do that and then maybe that. So let's see. Let's do... Um, uh, uh, black, blue, and a colorless. And we're going to play the Saga King Narfi's Betrayal. Mm. I didn't know this card existed. Um, yeah, what the heck? So, the first thing is each player mills four cards, then you may exile a creature or planeswalker card from each graveyard. Mm. So that's what we're going to do. All right. Don't one, have any two, creatures three, yet, four. so... One, two, three... Four. All right, you got three lands and a runic armasaur. Ironically, runic armasaur is your only target. So if you are what choosing, what does he do? He is a two-five for three mana. Whenever an opponent activates an ability of a creature or land that isn't a mana ability, you can draw a card. All right, definitely exiling him. I only hit one creature, the Port Razor. The five mana four four. Whenever he deals combat damage to a player, untap each creature you control. After this combat phase, there's an additional combat phase. Um, Port Razor cannot attack a player and has already attacked this turn. So that's a big old bummerino because uh, that's pretty good uh, though. Still, pretty still good. though, with your commander, pretty good. And Oof. then I am going to exile. Um, I'm going to exile nothing from my graveyard. Uh, no, well, I'm I gonna exile. What, but I don't know what the back end of the exile yeah. is. So I'm gonna exile the war, the the the, 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 the spectral sailor, uh, and I will let you know his other part because it's the same thing. Spectral sailor is the one for a one one flash flying activated ability stuff. Gotcha. So uh, King Narfi's betrayals second and third things are until the end of turn you may cast spells from among cards exiled with King Narfi's betrayal, and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast those spells. Oh, okay, cool. So I'm going to put that over there. Then we got one, two, three, four mana left over. And that is enough mana to play this card, which this is probably one of the cards I was most excited about in this entire pre-con. It is one of the cards oh, that I saw and went, I need that pre-con. We're coming with the Grim Captain's Locker. Hey, -o. Um, cool. Check that art, please. The cool, like, chest opening thing. Oh, yeah. It's a four mana artifact. You tap to surveil one, which allows me to look at the top card of my library. I may put it into my graveyard. Its second ability is tap. Until end of turn, each creature in my graveyard gains escape. So for three and a black, and I exile four other cards from my graveyard, I then cast that card from my graveyard for the escape cost, which is pretty sweet. Card. Yeah. So super neat. So we're going to go right four. We're going to tap. We're going to do that surveil. I'm going to look at the top card, and what is that? Is it going to the yard? Oh, it's going to the yard. It's Malcolm, <laughs> the keen-eyed navigator. Oh, nice. Great card. So that's super cool. And then what's the power and toughness on that dino you've got? This right is now? a this is a five five brethren. I just wanna I just wanna recap that. You said five five? Uh, indeed, yes, with the with the five on the one side and the five on the other side of that slash. That's my least favorite spot for the five to be on both yeah. sides. Indeed. Okay, well, <laughs> so what we're going to have to do here is we're going to go to the combat step. And if you remember what Admiral Brass the Unsinkable does, I'm going to reanimate one of my pirates to the battlefield. What and you doing? What you doing? 
Here's the thing, um, I uh, really like drawing cards. So Malcolm the Keen Eye Navigator, there he is. He comes in with a finality counter. He's now a 4-4, four, four, so he's a 4-4 four, four flying haste. It wow. says whenever one or more pirates I control deal damage to my opponents, I create a treasure token for each opponent dealt damage. So then because we're in combat and I have a 4-4 four, four flying haste, we're coming at you with him. Malcolm the Keen-Eyed, he's so keen, I tapped my cards in a different direction. That's <laughs> disgusting. Um, there he is, so he's bang, smack you, right? Oh yeah, he smacks me right. So I'm gaining the monarchy back, and I'm making the whole thing, the most coveted thing a pirate is looking for, and that's that sweet, sweet treasure. Oh, he got the booty. Is it tapped or untapped? I don't remember. Oh, uh, that's a good question. Um, nope, just a treasure token. Ooh, very nice. Then, I'm going to pass the old turn. All right. So, our boy over here, Pants Laza, uh, does untap now. Yes. Which is pretty sweet. And we are going to go to our draw. Ew. My least favorite card, can you guess? Myriad Landscape. It's Myriad Landscape. <laughs> Good guess. I'm, I'm, uh, I may not play it, though. I'm going to wait and I'm going to hold out. We're going to see what happens. All right, we are going to come down with the man, the myth, the new card. Love new cards. I think it's a new card. Uh, we're Perfect. coming out with the Bronze Beak Foragers. Uh, when it enters the battlefield for each opponent, I exile up to one target non-land permanent that player controls until the Bronze Beak Forager leaves the battlefield. Um, and then it has the ability to pay X and a white to put target card with the mana value X exiled with the bronze back forager into its owner's graveyard, and I gain X life. Uh, very oh. interesting ability, very unique. That is very um, interesting. So a couple triggers. We're gonna have its ETB trigger as well as Pants's ETB. Uh, we're gonna start. We're gonna stack them so that Pants will go off first, uh, just in case we hit something spicy. So we're gonna flip for Discover Four. We're going to go past the Quartzwood Crusher, uh, Forest, past Atali. Wow, look at these cards. Uh, it's into the Otepec Huntmaster. Uh, so he's going to come out. He's a 1-2 dinosaur spells. I cast, cost one less to cast, and I can tap him to give target dinosaur haste until end of turn. Um, now, he himself does not have haste, so not very relevant. And the bronze back is going to go ahead and try to exile your commander. And we are going to let it exile my commander. Exile, exile? Like, exile, un it's until he leaves the battlefield, yeah? No, no, no. Um, wait, is it? Oh. oh, it is until he leaves the battlefield. You're right, you're right. I'm sorry, new cards. I thought it was exiled and I have the opportunity to put it into the grave for the life game. But he's right. I, it is until it leaves the battlefield. So we're going to allow that. Okay. That seems suspect. That seems like you have a way to get rid of it, um, which is very nerve wracking, but I have not much to do about that. So in that line of thought, we are just going to go ahead and play out uh, with the rest of our turn here. We're going to come down with a forest instead of the myriad landscape uh, because ha ha. <laughs> um, and then we are going to come out with um, a one, two, three and we're gonna play a descendants path with the beautiful new art peep that art Ooh. uh enchantment at the beginning of my upkeep i reveal the top card of my library if it's a creature card that shares a creature type with a creature i control i can cast it without paying its mana cost if i don't cast it i put it on the bottom of my library pretty sweet then we'll move to combat and you're looking pretty wide open oh so yeah we're, we're coming in with the crew Everybody. Everybody. Indeed. That's going to hurt. So, that, so that's a, a total of 15. Oh, boy. Now what does that bring you to? 14. Ooh, that's <laughs> spicy. That's nice. Oh, no. Uh, okay. Uh, and that's going to be it for us. So we are going to draw a card as we are now the monarch. And uh, you're up. All righty. So we're going to untap. And... Uh, we're gonna have to do a whole lot of, a whole lot of something. So, casual reminder: I can now play my exiled one mana guy or your guy who costs three mana. Yes, sir. That boy. But we're gonna draw first. 
Okie dokie. Um, oh, I love when lands come into play tapped. Um, we're going to take the uh, Port of Carfell, put that into play tapped. It's one of them cool Calhemian lands. Mm. Uh, this one, if I ever get to it, can give me a... Uh, it mills, and then I can get a creature card from my grave to the battlefield tap. So that's super interesting. I like the nice. thematic because port pirates go to ports. Then we're <laughs> gonna be tapping the grim, the grim, the grim guy, the grim thing, and we're gonna surveil one. And what is that? Oh, that's going to the graveyard. This is Kari Zev, the skyship one that makes Ragavan the token. Mm. Um, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mana. So I think what we gonna have to do here is we gonna have to tap all seven of that. Which is a lot. Oh dear. Is this gonna be We're the gonna uh, second time I lose to blood money? I mean, it's definitely gonna be the second time I blow <laughs> you up with a blood money, that's for sure. Come on, Boom! Man. It's not didn't my fault, it's the only board wipe I Didn't I just lose a game to blood money? What, what, yeah, our last one released, right? Yeah, you did. Jeez. One, two, three, four, five, six creatures dying. And for Malcolm being destroyed by the blood money, the finality counter does say that if you would die, exile it instead. So there's no treasure from that. So I'm only getting six, but I can't be sad about oh, six boo. tapped treasures. Truth. So here they go. Bam. Um, And your guy died, so she's unsinkable, baby. This is true. She's I'll give that to you. You knew that from the start. All right. And then uh, you ain't got no creatures, which is awesome. This is true. For me. Um, so what we're going to do here, um, we are going to go to combat. And that means I get a pirate. I think I know which one you're going to get. It's pretty yeah. good. <laughs> Quick. I'm getting. Pause and chat down below. <laughs> I'm bringing back Kari Zev! What? The Skyship Raider! Oh, I'm, I'm flabbergasted. I bet you are. So, here's that finality counter. So, she's a first strike menace, not end haste because of her, and a 4-4. Four, four. When she attacks, I make Ravigan. Ravigan, you heard it here, folks. Ragavan. Ravigan. Um, who's a 2-1. He ETB's tapped and attacking. So, we're going to combat, of course, mm. Kari, and boom! Ya boy, the least useful way I've ever played this card. Where, oh, where is it? Did I, is he a treasure? He's probably a treasure. He is, there he is. <laughs> so he's tapped, so we're coming in for a total of six damage. Sweet, we're taking it. We're going to 24. And it is your turn. Oh boy, things are not looking good for us. Uh, we overextended. A fatal flaw of mine. I never anticipate the blood money. All right. Um, we got a trigger. At the beginning of our upkeep, reveal the top card of my library. If it's creature type, shows creature with card, blah, blah, blah. So I don't have any. If I don't cast it, it goes to the bottom. So we're just sending whatever this is to the bottom. So it's the Verdant Sun's avatar. Boo hoo. Um, to the bottom. Then we're going to go to our normal draw. Okay, we're going to come out with the Cinder Glade. Uh, untapped if I control two or more basics, which I do. And then we're going to have to recast our boy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's the best we got right now. Uh, and we're going to come out with the pants. There he is. Oh, and he or another. So we're going to discover for four. Huzzah. Nope. We got the Wrathful Raptors. That looks new. But we're running past it. We're getting the Topiary Stomper. I love that guy. Oh, uh, nice. 4-4 four, four, Vigilance. When he enters the battlefield, I search my library for a basic land, put it on the battlefield, tap, then shuffle. He cannot attack or block unless I control seven or more lands, which I do. Uh, so he's live, and we're going to go ahead and grab uh, a basic land of whatever we want. Uh, we're going to just get a planes real quick, and we'll worry about shuffling in a second. Um, and then we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna pass. Um... Okay. Yeah, yeah. And we're going to shuffle. While you're shuffling, I'm going to go through some untapping here. Gnarly. Some thinking. Again, I could play the card I exiled or the card that was exiled of yours. This is your last um, turn to do so, correct? Correct. Sweet. And I will... All right, so we're going to come in with a... Um, well, we're going to surveil first. Does that make sense? We're going to look at this top card here. Uh, that card is going to the grave. It's a hostage taker. Ooh, what the heck? 
And then we're gonna play the Frost Boil Snarl Tap because I don't have anything to reveal to you. We got a <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight mana plus seven treasures. Oh, buddy. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a black and a blue here and then two of any color. So let's do that and let's do that. And we are going to play Ramirez de Petro, the Pillager. Ooh. So when Ramirez de Petro enters the battlefield, I lose two life and make two treasure tokens. Tick, 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 tick. And then whenever one or more pirates I control deal combat damage to a player, exile the top card of that player's library. I may cast that card for as long as it remains exiled. Nice. Then, That's a good card. It's awesome that he refunds you the treasure immediately. And it's not even. Tapped. Oh yeah. Oh, God, it's so good. So then we're going to do a red, and we're going to do a one and a two. And that is going to lead us to play the Broadside Bombardiers. It is a 2-2 two -two pirate with menace and haste that is boast. Sacrifice another creature or artifact. He deals damage equal to two plus the sacrificed permanent's mana value to any target. Activate only if this creature attacked this turn and only once each turn. Pretty good. Then... We're going to tap this, and we're going to immediately use two of the treasures that Mr. DePietro got me. And we're going to come in with Captain Lannery Storm. She's a 2-2 haste. Whenever she attacks, create a treasure. And then, whenever I sack a treasure, she gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn. That's a, a very ironic time to play that when you're in the middle of storming out. <laughs> uh, yep. <laughs> so then, then what we're going to do is we're going to go to combat. So... Uh, she does say to be of combat on your turn. So the first trigger, we are going to go and grab the Port Razor. Yep. So the Port Razor says whenever uh, he deals combat damage to a player, untap each creature I control after this combat phase. There's an additional combat phase. He cannot attack a player that's already attacked. He is already a 4-4. And here's his finality counter. Yep. So then uh, I'm going to attack with the Bombardier, Captain Lannery Storm, Kari Zev, the Port Razor, and of course, Ragavan, if I can find his cool little token. Sweet. Um, question. Sure. Uh, the, the, the dude, the new guy, the Marauder, the Cannon Boy, and the Bombardier yep. or whatever, uh, his yep. trigger is on attack or damage or what is it? His trigger is... I can activate the ability, which I sack creature to activate it, but only if he attacked this turn. Okay, so it's just available And to only you as now. a sorcery. Only as a sorcery. Oh, okay, I see. All right. Uh, okay, cool. All right, well, I hate it. I hate everything. I uh, really despise it. Um, but what can you do? You know what I mean? Um, so the Port Razor has to deal combat damage, right? The Port Razor... Has to deal damage to a player. Yes, right. sir. So we'll block it with the topiary because it's a 4 4, I believe. Yep. Yes, it is. Um, and then you must have something that's weaker than a 4 4, right? Um, 4 4. This thing's a 2 2, but I can sack treasures to give yeah. it plus 1 plus 0. Um, How about the, and the, then the bombardiers? This guy, he's also a 2 2, but he has menace. Oh, rough. So you can attack, you can block Ragavan, but he'll die anyway, or you can block this thing, but I can pump it. Or you can block Kari, who is a 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, let's just block, uh, we'll block Oh, Ra Kari also has First Strike and Menace. Yeah, Never mind. Fine. We'll block Ragavan just to chump some damage, I guess. Okie dokie, so he will die. Okay. This and guy will die. We'll exile him. Yeah. Um, and you would then take, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, sir. We're going down to 16. Um, and then, uh, you're going to exile the, uh, top card of your library. Shaboom. It's Zatalpa, the Primal Dawn. The mm. double mick flapping, slapping baddie. Uh, how much mana does he cost? He costs eight. It, it looks like the amount of treasures you have. <laughs> there we go. Get me a Zatalpi. <laughs> oh, wow. All right. There you go. You got a Zatalpa. So what's his, uh, I need to know his power toughness and all his keywords. Uh, yeah. So he's a 4-8, um, 
can, you can just uh, nickname him for a minute. I'll tell you his keywords so you don't have to write them all right now. Thank you. Anything else for you, my friend? Um. Uh, um. I don't think so, right? I don't have any extra mana. Darn it. I got the extra treasure off that. Um. Oh boy. Sacrifice permanence mana value, huh? Two plus that. I guess we're gonna sack Ramirez de Petro to deal. Two plus his mana value, which is four, six damage to any target. So Oof. we're just gonna bop you in the uh, in the face. That brings me to ten, which feels deathly. And then it's your turn. All right, this is our last chance, Pantsalaza. Come on, baby, let's descendants path. Oh, we hit it. Okay, sweet. Uh, nice. We got the raging Regisaur. Um. Whenever Raging Regisaur attacks, it deals one damage to any target. Uh, very nice, very nice. Um, and then this is a May, so I guess I could hold off if I felt like it's trying to get a bigger thing, but I don't really know if we're going to get there. So we'll just take it. We'll discover four. Word. Uh, we're going to hit the Is It's Quinth, the firstborn of Gashaf. Oh, so, nice. So cute, bro. Very cute. Uh, this is a 2-3 with haste. Uh, whenever it enters the battlefield, I can pay 2. And when I do, target dinosaur I control deals damage equal to its power to another target creature. That's actually pretty great to hit that right now. I'm not going to lie. Um, so we'll do it. We'll pay 2. Um, and we'll have Mr. Pants deal 4 damage to somebody. Um, what's uh, Beckett Brass's toughness? 5? It is... Uh, th three? She's a 3-3? Three, three? Uh, yeah. Let, let's get her real quick. Bang! Yeah, she got go. Dead. And, um... Wow, seven? Rough, alright. Um, and then... We're gonna finally go to our draw. Shaboom. Dang. It's not a good draw. <laughs> uh, that's okay. <laughs> We are going to look at what this thing does. No, we don't want that. We are going to just, uh, we'll just go right for it. We'll do one, two, uh, three, four, five. Uh, we'll do this instead. Why Why wouldn't we? We'll do it like that or whatever. Um, and we're going to cast the Return of the Wild Speaker. Um, yeah, so this thing is going to give uh, my non-humans plus three plus three, or I can draw cards equal to the greatest power among non-humans I control. What's your What's your life again? Just Just to be. I'm at twelve. Extra, extra careful there. So max you could take there would be the five. So you'll You'll be fine if I. So I I, I won't. That That won't save my skin. So we're just going to draw the cards and see if we get something spicy. So we're going to draw four. One, two, three, four. Um, and then we're gonna look. Uh, nope, not spicy enough. So let's uh, let's go ahead and throw down a Mosswort Bridge, uh, which is a hideaway four. So we're gonna take a peep at the top four, and we're gonna hide this guy away underneath of that. Bring that out later uh, after we die. And we're gonna throw those <laughs> ones to the bottom. Um. Dang, Zatalpa is a, is a card, huh? Why you gotta be out there playing my sweet McJammin' I told you I was huh? coming there for that booty. I only own like 80 Zatalpas. I've never cast it until now. Yeah, that is, I, I mean, at least that's a nice feeling. Uh, so we're gonna tap our last two here. We're gonna play Thunderherd Migration, which uh, rampant grows us again if we reveal a dinosaur. We're just gonna reveal the bellowing Aegisaur. Uh, which Ooh. isn't a rage guy. He doesn't really do much. He's just an uncommon. So we'll go get a basic in a moment. Uh, but that's going to do it. We got nothing else to do. So we're passing. All right. Uh, on tap. Bunch of dudes. So now it's your turn here. Zatalpa, just as a reminder, has flying. He has double strike. He has vigilance. He has trample. He has indestructible. Wow. What a crazy dinosaur. Yes. We're drawing. As a quick reminder, my current health is 10. 
<laughs> yeah, all right. I mean, you know, we're going to go here for the mountain. We're going to actually, we're going to play Faithless Looting. Um, draw two cards and discard two cards. So we'll draw two. Um, and then we'll discard two. We are going to discard um, the uh, Ghost of Ramirez de Petro and the uh, Time Stream Navigator, which I don't think we'll need. But that card's interesting. Probably He's the not. guy who does some stuff. Then we didn't play a land yet, so we're going to go ahead and do that. That's really all we did that for, I guess. Then uh, seven mana on Miss Brass. So we're going to go a blue and whatever that is and whatever that is and then one colorless and then the two generic so here we go i tap those in the absolute strangest way possible but ba 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 boom so she enters i'm gonna mill four one two three four and we're milling a terramorphic expanse uh sorcery an enchantment and an artifact so a whole bunch of not good but that's probably gonna be fine um then we're gonna surveil one because why not and we're going to throw the Rogue's Passage into the graveyard. Because I can. Then we're going to combat. And we are going to get... We're going to get this, uh, the Taker of Hostages. Wow. When he ETBs, exile another target creature or artifact until he leaves the battlefield. I may cast a card for as long as it remains exiled and mana of any type can be spent to cast that spell. Seems rude. We're going to get rid of... Your best blocker. Uh, I mean, it's no difference, really. Obviously. We'll say pants. Come sure. on, send it my way. Let's go. And there it is. Bam, 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 oh. bam, bam, and the monkey. The power. I think, that's a, I think that's a GG. That's a GG, baby. Bonk. Bonk. Dead to my own Zatalp. Dang, dude. That was crazy. Okay, not gonna lie. Right out the gate. That deck slaps. The synergy Yo. is crazy. I love that. Seems super fun. I wouldn't have thought like pirate typeal inherently mm -hmm. as like a graveyard kind of like you know reanimation like, but like it's that quick like I don't know. Okay, at first when you were talking about your commander and you said five CMC, I'm like that's stupid. I'm like, why would that card be 5 CMC? Like, the effect isn't strong enough. But I didn't really think about it through my head, like, the whole idea that, like, it can trigger the first combat she comes down yeah. since you could play her pre-combat, and yeah. that it will come out with haste. So, like, I didn't really put that together at first, but that ended up being so powerful oh, to yeah. literally be able to go, like, oh, my commander, immediately get value, which my thing kind of does the same, right? But Discover is a lot more risky. So, like, Pants mm -hmm. comes down... He discovers for four, which means I could get anything from four all the way down to zero. You know what I mean? And then yeah. it doesn't get haste. So even though I could rip something with four, it might be cool and everything, but she can grab anything on the scale, bro. You could get a seven yeah. mana pirate and it comes out with haste. The finality, small downside, but I don't, I don't know, dude. What do you think? I think that was nuts, right? Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of just synergies I didn't think about. So I didn't, I looked at the new cards, obviously, but I didn't look at the deck list. I didn't look at it. So mm -hmm. I wasn't sure like how they were going to make good on her ability. Um, and then I started seeing some of the cards like Port Razor. She triggers at the beginning of combat. So good. He gives you another combat. You get a whole second trigger on her ability. And like, mm -hmm. sure, finality. Like I exiled, you know, like five of my own creatures. But guess what? Not hampering at all. She, when she yeah. ETBs, you get an additional four mil. Um, the treasure, like, there's a lot of guys that have incidental treasure because they're pirates. There's also a lot of them, they have first strike, they have flying, they have menace. So giving them haste, it's not just like a 4-4 four, four with haste. It's a 4-4 four, four with haste with menace. A 4-4 yeah. four, four haste with first strike. Like, so the pirates already come a little bit ripped for combat. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's some synergies, like that time stream guy who gives you the extra turn. His trigger isn't sack. It's put him at the bottom of your library. Finality counters say if he were to oh, yeah. die. Really so you cool. can reanimate him with haste, decide not to attack with him, and rip yourself another turn? Yeah. Like, that card is... I know, listen, I know it's not the River Song thing with him, um, but that's still way more, like, oh, gassed so really in this deck than I expected. Like, there are so many cards. I mean, even the Grim Captains thing, I got to surveil, like, five times. If somebody said, mm -hmm. do you want to surveil five for four mana? 
literally every single time I'm like, yeah, yeah. Why would I not want to do that? Yeah, that's sweet. It's so, so powerful. I also um, see like it would be cool with like um, a few like extra like unsummon effects as part of your like removal package. Yeah. Like I think unsummon effects are often like a really like underutilized thing in Commander, but especially in a deck like that, like the tempo win to unsummon against your opponent, but like also the potential like, ooh, save yep. one of my dudes who might be gone forever, like with a quick unsummon. I mean, it gives you a card back in hand. It's almost like, you know, again, you net, like, same cards. You don't lose any advantage. With a quick, like, one mana unsummon effect, if you're about to lose, like, a key piece, like Port Razor or whatever with Finality, like, being able to just go, like, ooh, unsummon him. And then the versatility of that unsummon effect being able to be used against your opponents in a pinch, too, yeah. to get the tempo win or just shut down a really bad guy. Like, I don't know. There's just, like, a lot that can be done there. I actually really love the commander like the actual yeah. card like no like I she's one of the reasons i'm really interested in it i mean the synergies alone like the way the deck is designed is really cool but i really love the commander it's one of those things right like i you guys know me now right like i'm i'm a magic hipster so i don't like to build anything that like is you know stereotypically like probably going to be relatively popular or or was a, a, for, like a commander from a pre-construct i tend to avoid it it doesn't mean like i think like i would never do it or i have any kind of judgment against people that do i just like personally i like to brew like absolute whack daddy stuff but in this particular case like that's really attracted me that's a that's a thing where like i don't know if i would even care if it was super popular i would probably just build it because it seems really cool um i probably won't but like i don't know seeing it on the table is really cool again shout out to r&d for yeah. for like the work there like the fact that that was literally i swear to god this is not like an editing lie or anything like that this is the first game we just played with these mm -hmm. period slaved them up right after the intro played it out of the box and look at how smooth that thing works that's mm -hmm. i don't even build decks that good like first shuffle up presumably no gosh <laughs> <You> no <know? laughs> like that's crazy um yeah, that's wild. anyway enough of that i'm just like i'm kind of blown away by yours that's the reason my talk is mostly over there uh as far as my deck over here you know it's fine like uh, i don't have anything against it but i like my dino deck better um oh yeah i just think a chef has the ability to make these like really fun kind of incredibly crazy swingy turns which you know pantsalaza is kind of doing in a much more like liminal scale right like he yeah. gives you once a turn you can possibly cheat a dude it's restrictive based on your toughness and it's not like he's like that much cheaper you know what i mean he's still five cmc to cast this guy but also a way lower ceiling on it as well right like the yeah. the ability to go like over the top like gashetha allows you to do it really isn't there right like i feel like 90 percent of the time i was triggering his ability at four i think i actually i only triggered it above four one time yeah and again because discover like cascade can land you into any you know it doesn't have to be for the value you've spent into it or that you triggered it for you're not guaranteed to get all that value back even if you are increasing your discover amount so yeah. you know there's a lot more like kind of like you know less of a like a bombastic play from it so i like pieces from this deck i really enjoy like some of the new cards i really like that one that does the exile till it leaves but you have the ability to possibly shift it into the graveyard uh, especially yeah. because you can hold that pressure i think mm -hmm. it's uh i don't think it's a uh, uh, sorcery speed no so like you can hold the pressure of moving it into the graveyard so if somebody goes to remove it to get their piece back you could respond by dumping it into the graveyard gaining the life um, so it kind of gives you like a little bit of like the advantage there on the O-ring style effect. Um, yeah. I also like a couple other pieces. I really liked um, it's it's Quint, the firstborn of Gesheth. Um, you know, obviously it was in the circumstance that it happened, uh, but I, it, I don't know. He's super cute. Obviously, like I have the Gesheth deck, yeah. so it's a total bias. But like uh, it ended up being pretty clutch, like that one ETB pump it extra couple mana and you get the fight spell, which is pretty cool. Um, Anyway, yeah, there's a, there's a bunch of new cards in here that I think were pretty sweet. Uh, there's a, a bunch of other ones we didn't get to see, but they're, they're pretty cool. Oh, yeah. I'm excited to slot this stuff into my dino deck, but this oh, isn't yeah. necessarily like a build of it that I would choose. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I mean, they're definitely like, it's kind of exactly what you said. I feel very similarly where like, you know, that deck, I feel like it has like maybe like a, uh, a consistency in the tempo, but Gesheth, tail swing like 
you could flop five dinos. That yeah. deck is not going to do that. That commander is not built to do that. Well, you and there were a couple times, yeah, where you hit something really cool in your flip, but it's too strong. Like, you ripped a tally, a tally, too much mana, couldn't play it. Like, so I feel like that deck has the downside where you could hit some really cool dinos when you're looking and miss them early and mid game because mm. you're not able to just play things unrestricted. Whereas Gishef, you could play 70 mana worth of dinosaurs if you hit them. It doesn't yeah, matter. no, that's a really good point Boom. too. There is that feels bad element of like watching those incredible hits go by. The yeah. Apex Altasaur that I had hit at the one part would have been an incredible rip. Like yeah. in Gishath, you literally just, that just does not exist because yeah. Gishath is unrestricted. If whatever you're hitting, it's coming out, right? So like this, this does have that feeling sometimes where it's like, oh man, if only I had discovered for seven here, I would have actually had a good play. Yeah. Instead, I get a cultivate. Boo hoo. Yeah. And like, you can't avoid playing that early, like stuff. Like, you know, so like with yeah. Cascade decks, you always run into that risk of like hitting garbage, like your early game stuff, late game. The only way to abate that, I think, usually in a Cascade build is to just be able to Cascade so many times or so aggressively that it is hardly relevant. Um, or cascading some kind of restricted matter. Like take Jota, for example. Obviously, like <coughs> he's not true cascade, he's cascaded for his own thing, but like it definitely helps to uh like abate that downside and the fact that he's on every cast, like you can do it a bunch of times each turn. Yeah. I think the restriction here to only once a turn, I understand why it's there, but I think it might take him a little too low uh yeah, for me, like power wise. It's. I mean, I'm not a card designer, so this is probably totally on base. But like, I I wonder what it would be like to bring him down to four <laughs> CMC. You know what I mean? Like, if he was one and Nea, um, like would that really be too strong? If you keep the once a turn restriction on him, I don't yeah. really know. You know what I mean? Like, maybe it would be. It probably would be. But like, to me, the once a turn creates that huge differential. Um, I still had a lot of fun with the deck. I still think this one is cool. It's got some really good cards in it, by the way. If you guys haven't looked at the list, you get a Chroma's Will with this one, which is still, uh, you know, pushing yeah. some value, which is pretty sweet. You get a, a Xenagos, I believe. Um, you know, some really sweet stuff in here, um, which is awesome. Also, in the Pirate one, you get, obviously, we didn't see it, but the Black Market yeah. Connections, guys. Like, you Phenomenal. should pick that up. And the art's really cool, too. Um if you haven't if you haven't seen that, they have reskinned some of the reprint cards uh, yeah. to have new arts, which is pretty sweet. Um, but overall, I don't know, man. That was a really fun game. I liked the design space on these better than Wilds of Eldraine. Um, I think that it made for like a really enjoyable gameplay experience. What do you think? No, I agree. I, I really, uh, I really like the design space. I like. I just think in general, like. <coughs> I'm always somebody who takes a look at the pre-cons even before we were doing this. And I have a ton, a lot of decks that were commanders from pre-cons that I've either retooled the pre-con or ripped the commander out and done something completely different. And I just, I think in general, like the pre-cons just, they've, especially recently, have been just feeling so good. Yeah. Every time I rip a pre-con, I'm excited about it. I'm excited to see what's across the table with the other pre-cons. And I'm like bummed that we can't rip the other two like i yeah. i just think they've been doing such a good job you know what i mean so i'm um, i'm really i'm really happy with it and i i really you know not that i need another uh graveyard focused deck um but i only have one grixis deck so who knows what we'll see with with miss brass here um <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly uh but with that being said guys if you did happen to snag one of the other two pre-cons and were able to bring it out of the box and and test around with it let us know what it was like uh, you know, like John said, we are curious for sure. So if they work similar or better or cooler, if you think mm -hmm. we should try one, just shout it out down in the comments. And if you want to support the show even further, or you really enjoy the content that we're making and you want to help keep us going, you know, proverbially, uh, you can check out our Patreon link and the Discord where we're hoping to build a community where we can do some more of this deep dive chat in a more informal uh, circumstance where we can actually connect with you guys. So that would be really chill. Um, yeah. But... That's about all we have for you guys, so we will see you in the multiverse. <laughs>